If you can't seem to improve your hip external rotation, this video is for you. Let's first understand what hip external rotation really is, and then we can better understand why it gets limited. External rotation of the pelvis involves this sacrum bone going into counter nutation and tipping backwards. And I'm exaggerating how much movement's happening at the pelvis here, so you can see what's going on. But this is extension or tipping back of the sacrum, which allows for these bones right here to flare out into external rotation, these innominate bones right here. That's going to provide space down below for this femur, if this moves out, for this femur to slide forward within the hip socket, which is external rotation of the femur. So obviously what's going to limit external rotation is some people have a bias towards internal rotation. This happens one of two ways. They can either have a bias of their pelvis towards more of that closed pack position, that nutation and internal rotation of their femurs, which can limit their ability to access external rotation, or they can be stuck in an anterior pelvic tilt or orientation of the pelvis where this pelvis is moving forward, which pushes these femurs into more internal rotation and restricts the ability for this femoral head to come forward. What's interesting is a lot of people don't actually have as much external rotation as they think they do. When they go to measure their external rotation, what happens is that the femur moves off to the side as their foot rotates. And what's happening there is that person is actually just creating compensatory external rotation. And what I mean by that is in order for us to genuinely have external rotation, that means that the femur can stay in place and then we're going to see that leg rotate as the femur stays in place. But what's happening when someone abducts that leg as they move into external rotation is that they're actually rolling their whole pelvis as an entire unit towards that side to find external rotation space they don't have within that hip socket right there. So they can create more of that if they roll towards that space. In my beginner body restoration program, the first goal I have is to improve external rotation space within the hips because that is necessary for us to move into a position of internal rotation, we have to come from a place of relative external rotation that will allow us space to move into that. In order to improve external rotation, we want to put the pelvis in a position where it can access counter nutation and also external rotation of these femurs right here. That is generally in lower levels of hip flexion to start for most people, but we also have external rotation biases in very deep levels of hip flexion. That would be beyond about 100 to 110 degrees, depending on the person. Here are two exercises you can try to immediately see improvements in external rotation. Just make sure that you're taking it genuinely, as I mentioned before. So to set up for this, we want to be in a long Long, straight body position with our shoulder in line with our hip which is in line with our foot on the downside. The top side leg is at about a 45 ish degree angle with the trunk right here. So if this was perfectly 90 it'd be at about 45. And now what we want to do is just have that foam roller resting gently beneath the thigh of this top side leg. And Trevor, what I want you to think about doing is moving one segment of your body at a time. So initiating with the knee and rolling forward as you inhale through your nose, right to about there. And then exhale through your nose and or mouth and then slowly come back initiating with the knee and then it will lead into your hip and low back moving a little bit. So he's only rolling to a little further right about there and then coming back. It's very subtle, very controlled, inhaling through his nose as he goes out, exhaling as he comes back. It should feel like the knee is initiating it, which makes the hip move and then a little bit of the back. The most common mistake we see in this activity is that people will dump their trunk forward as they roll, and that is not what we want to happen. We want to get some dissociation and movement between sides of the pelvis so we can get that by maximizing this lower body movement. The upper body is relatively quiet. So we're gonna start by lifting one leg slightly off of the ground, and with the side that's down, we're going to press through the inner edge of the heel and the ball of the foot underneath the big toe right here, the first metatarsal head, but we're not going to lose the outside foot. That's just where the pressure is mostly going. And as we do that, we're going to raise our hips off of the ground, but maintain a slight pelvic tilt. So posterior pelvic tilt at all times. We never want to arch the back. We want to make sure that we're just rolling off the ground as if we are a piece of Velcro being pulled off one vertebrae at a time. If we do that well, we're going to feel our glute engage on this downside leg. 
We only want to pull this leg back so far as to when we don't feel a pinch in the hip flexor area. So if you do, back off a little bit, but bring it as far back as you can without feeling a pinch. And then take the opposite side elbow and just gently reach it for that knee and exhale through your mouth. You're going to feel your side abs on this side engage. Inhale, exhale again and hold that for about five breaths. A progression of this would be with each exhale, if you're able, just bring this knee one inch closer to your nose. You don't want it to be any more than that. You want to ease slowly into it. If you're not able to do it, it's totally fine. Just hang out where you were and you're still going to get a lot out of this exercise. The most common mistake on this is that when people bring this leg up, they're going to dump the leg off to the side like that. So keep the knee in line with the hip. The other most common mistake is that people on this downside leg are going to have a tendency to lose the whole foot flat or they're going to do that and lose the heel. So make sure their whole foot stays flat, foot contacts right here, the arch are being maintained. 